In this video, we're going to count down the top five mental arithmetic tips that's going to make you do so much better on the QTS skills test. So the first tip I've got is split and combine. And on the side, I'm going to put the basic summary of the strategy. So in this one, we're going to split up a question and then put it back together. So say you had five times 126. This isn't particularly easy to do in your head. You know, you don't know your 126 times table particularly well. But what we can do is we can actually split this up into three and then recombine it all. So let's see how that works. So start by splitting it into something easier. So I've taken it into five times 100 plus five times 20 plus five times six. So each of those numbers I've split up and you're keeping all of the uh, places correct. So you've got hundreds, tens and units. And we can take that um, written out in full. We can do the individual multiplications. So five times 100 is giving you 500, five times 20 is giving you 100, and five times six is giving you 30. We add that all together, and that gives us 530. So if you see two, a multiplication, and you're not really sure how to do the whole multiplication in one step, split it up, and you can recombine it. With some practice, you'll get really quick at that. Second thing, combining percentages, similar idea. We need to break down the question. So say you want to do 27% of 350. Looking at that's a bit intimidating. You're not going to get that straight away. It doesn't pop into your head. You know, like 10% is very obvious. But we can use that idea that 10% is very obvious to find 20%. So we start by finding 10%. So do 350 divided by 10. That tells us that 10% is 35. Hence, 20% has to be 70. I've underlined that because that's part of the way to our answer. Next step, let's find 7%. Multiplying by 7 divided by 7, not particularly nice. Finding 1%, though, very easy. So, of course, 1% of 350 is 3.5. We've just divided 350 by 100, giving us 1%. We want 7, nice and simple, multiply it by 7, so we get 7% is 24 and a half. Very simple so far. Now, what we've done is we've broken down the question. Now we need to put it back together. So simply combine those two and I've underlined the two things you need to combine. So to get 27%, we have to add the 20%, which is 70, and the 7% was 24.5, giving our final answer of 94.5. So you've got a percentage that you're not sure how to do. Similar to our last bit, split it up, and then put it back together much quicker. So fractions, another thing you have to be really good on the QTS skills test. We're gonna look at friendly fractions and a nice trick that gets you to the answer really quickly. So if you can get 100 on the bottom of a fraction, you can just read off the percentage. So say you've got eight divided by 50. This is a nice friendly one that's got something easy to work with on the bottom. So the question is, how do we turn that 50 on the bottom of the fraction into 100? And the way we do that is we multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So you see that 50 is turning into 100, and the 8 times 2 is giving us 16. As I said, you can just read off the percentage, and we read off that as 16%. So the strategy, get 100 on the bottom, and you can read out the percentage. And sometimes you'll look at it very simple to make that conversion. However, ones that are not friendly, often there's another step you've got to do. So say you want to find what is 48 over 32 as a percentage, same strategy, a little bit more difficult because that 32 isn't going to multiply into 100 very easily. However, when you analyze this and you've got to get in the way of looking at fractions and seeing times tables. So when you see 32, you should be thinking of the 8 times table. So you can divide top and bottom by 8 because 48 is also in the 8 times table. Now you've spotted the 8 times table and 32. You check it for 48 and it works and that gives us 6 over 4. So if you do the same thing at the top and the bottom of the fraction, it's the same fraction. So divided top and bottom by 8. We can then multiply it by 25. Why do we do 25? Well, we've got the 4 on the bottom and we've simplified it and we are following our strategy of getting 100. 4 times 25 is giving us 100 on the bottom. And we do the same to the top because we have to do the same to the top and the bottom giving us 150. Just like the last example, we have 100 at the bottom, so we can just read off the percentage on the top, which gives us an answer of 150%. So sometimes with the more difficult ones, you've got to follow some extra steps to get that 100 on the bottom. So when you think about 
fractions, percentages, get 100 on the bottom. That's where you're going. Dividing by a decimal, this always comes up. You always have one question where you've got to divide by a decimal. It's an important skill. There's a wonderful trick that makes this so much easier. And the trick is to make it bigger. Dividing by decimal is not so easy. Dividing by numbers, we're really good at that. We've done loads of practice, done all the time. So we need to turn this dividing by a decimal into a dividing by numbers problem. So what we can do is we can turn that 0 0.06 into the number 6. And we do that by timesing everything by 100. Because we've times everything by 100, we haven't actually changed the problem or the answer. So multiply that all by 100. So instead of doing 180 divided by 0 0.06, times everything by 100, we're going to solve the question, what is 18,000 divided by 6? And that's much easier to do. That's 3,000. 18 divided by 3 is, sorry, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and then we've got the 1,000 left over, giving us the answer 1,000. So the strategy here, multiply everything to get rid of the decimal and leave you with a nice number that you're good at dividing by. At number 5, we've got simplifying fractions fat fast. And what you've got to do is you've got to divide by the largest common multiple. The fastest route is the largest common multiple, though there are other tricks to do it. But the fastest is to find the largest times table that both numbers fit in. So you've got the number 49, and you've got the number 77. So you've got to be really good at your times tables, and you've got to recognize which times table do both of these numbers appear in. I made it slightly more difficult by putting 77, which is 7 times 11. Often people stop at 10. Good idea to learn your times tables to at least 12. All right. So this is clearly the seven times table. Similar to one of the previous questions, we can divide top and bottom by seven, giving us seven divided by 11. That's the fastest route to do it. Say we have another question so we can practice this again. We've got 52 divided by 80. We've got to look what times table. We find that the four times table is the best one, giving us 13 divided by 10 when we simplify that. There is a different strategy, um, and it would work for the second one, but not for the first particularly well. So if you're stuck and you just cannot see what times table it appears in, a good strategy is to try two, and that should work for every um, even multiple, or three, and then work your way up. So if you repeatedly divide by two, sometimes you can get the simplification without having to actually spot it. So if you're struggling for time, you're like, oh, I can't see what times table it is. Try two and then try three. Sometimes it works. Though the best method is to find the highest because it gets you straight down to simplification very fast. And lastly, we've got a bonus one that's called modular arithmetic. You can read into that. Um, and this is dividing with remainders and is really good for finding those time questions very quickly. So typical QTS skills test, question might look like this. So what time will it be 325 minutes after 10.30? That sort of question comes up all the time. The fastest way to solve this is to use modular arithmetic. And I'm going to break down an example that uses the principles of modular arithmetic without actually making it too complicated. There are slightly faster methods, but they are much more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the closest number that divides three, that 325 divided by 60, all right? So what is the closest that we can get to this? And what's the remainder? So we can see that five times 60 gives 300 and it leaves a remainder of 25. So five times 60, that's the closest we can get. So that's five hours, almost gets us to 325, but we've got a remainder left over of 25. So this is five remainder 25, or in other words, five hours with a remainder of 25 minutes. And since we've got in that format, it's so simple to make the addition. So we just do 10.30 plus five hours and 25 minutes with 24 hour clock, it's effortless. And we just add the five straight to the 10 giving 15, and then we add the 25. And you could convert that to a 12 hour clock depending on what the question said. So hopefully these tips have been useful to you. I went quite quickly, so you may have to go back and pause and work through the examples to fully understand it, because that's the best way to learn how to do this. My last tip, go onto the App Store and download an app to practice your times tables. Once you're very fast with times tables, this becomes infinitely easier. Best of luck with your skills test, and thank you for watching.